Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unbox and Reviews on How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to do a USB BIOS flashback on the MSI Z690 Tomahawk Wi Fi DDR5 version. Now, this is going to be one of those things where there is a few versions of this board available, so if you're experiencing any problems, the chances are you've got the wrong BIOS. But we'll go into that a little bit later on into the video. Some of the things you're going to require for this is a USB stick, ideally 32 gigabytes or less because you do need to format it to the FAT32 system. Also, obviously, make sure it's blank. If there's anything you need on there, transfer it off. If you've got a larger drive, you can use that, but you will need to create a smaller FAT32 partition on the drive. We have done a video on that, which I'll link in the video description. So if you do only have access to like a 64 gig or higher, then we'll show you how to do that also. Other things you'll need to make life a little bit easier is uh, something to put your motherboard on. Now, obviously, if you've built your PC already and you're finding that it's not working with your 13th or 14th gen processor, then kind of, yeah, you've got to wing it, go with what you've got. You can do this in a built system, but ideally, for the sake of fault finding, should anything go wrong or the BOSS process not work, then a board on its own on a cardboard box just with a power supply is the best way of doing it, in my opinion. But do whatever works for you. So we've got our motherboard, obviously you need that as well, and we've got our power supply. Now for the power supply, you only need to connect up two types of power, one of which is the main 24-pin power connector, which goes into the 24-pin connector on the motherboard, and also you need an EPS power connector. If the motherboard's got two, which most of the Tomahawks do, then you don't have to plug in both, you can just plug in one, it's absolutely fine. They are marked on the top there, uh, CPU or EPS1 and EPS2, either one is absolutely fine. So we've already got our setup pretty much done. So we've got our power supply here. Haven't connected everything up yet. We'll do that when we come to actually do the flash. The first thing we want to do is to go over to a computer and get our flash drive ready and also put the new BIOS file onto it. So obviously you are going to need access to a working PC. So if you don't have a working PC and this is your only platform, you're going to need to go to like a local library or to a friend's house, that kind of thing, and get your BIOS somehow. Okay, so this is our Windows desktop. I've already got the website up for the particular motherboard, and I'm just going to stick my USB stick in now. There is our USB stick. Now, fortunately, this one is actually empty already, but I'm going to go through the formatting process anyway, just for illustration purposes. So right-click, choose Format. You want FAT32, the allocation size just set to default. If there's anything in the volume label, ideally get rid of that if you can. For some reason, that does seem to cause problems on some systems. When you're happy, click on start. This will erase the drive. We'll get a notification of that. There we go, format USB drive D. Warning, formatting will erase all data. To format the disk, click OK. To quit, click cancel. So we're happy, so we're gonna click OK. And there we go, there is our drive formatted. So we can close that down now, don't need that anymore. So let's go ahead and get our BIOS file. So if we go to the website, this is the Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. Make sure you get the right board. It's very important, otherwise this will not work. Then head over to the support tab. On the support tab, generally it'll go to the first page anyway, being the BIOS, because that is the most common thing. So ideally you want the latest BIOS. Now this one is just over a month old, so that's absolutely fine. If for some reason the BIOS is only a couple of days old, I would probably suggest going for one slightly older, unless, depending when you're watching this, if there's some kind of major thing going on in the world where there's a compromised system thing out there, then obviously you do get the latest one. But for all intents and purposes, the second oldest, or one which has been out for a little while, is the better choice. This one updates the CPU code and the secure boot mechanism, updated OC auto rules and Intel APO function optimized, and also there's the Intel management engine firmware updates built into this as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get this one. The file is 9.58 megabytes, so we're gonna need to extract that once we get it, which will probably take it up to just under 16 megabytes. So click on download, we're going to save this to our Windows desktop. Once that's finished, we can minimize this window, head over back to the desktop, right click on the file, choose Extract All, and we'll keep the destination exactly the same. So it's going to our desktop. We'll click on Extract, and this will give us our file folder. So what we want to do now is to go into the folder, and we should have two files, one of which is a text document, which basically has details about the BOSS file and the BOSS file itself. Now, it's actually, this is extracted to 32 megabytes, so that's more likely the size that you're going to see. If for some reason you can't see this file extension, you're going to want to go to the View section here, then Show, and File Name Extensions, you want that actually enabled. So if you're not seeing the file extension, do, do that. We want to rename this file. 
So we're going to rename it, double click on it. You can erase that and do whatever you want, but we have to call it MSI, then a full stop, dot ROM, ROM. You can do this uppercase or lowercase, it makes no difference whatsoever, but it does have to be renamed this. A lot of people ask, why do we have to rename it this way? It's purely because the very, very rudimentary system built onto the motherboard can only recognize a file if it's in this format. If you leave it as anything else, it simply will not recognize it and it will not flash the BIOS. Don't ask me why that is, it's just because it's a very basic system and that is what it requires, so that's what we gotta do. So when you're happy, press enter. You'll get a message saying if you change a file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes, we are, so we'll click on yes. And now we've got our file, it's renamed to msi.rom. So we're gonna right click on it, I'm gonna choose either cut or copy. I'm gonna choose cut in this instance. We're gonna go back to our blank USB drive, right click on it and choose paste. And there we go, there is our file. So now we can eject this drive from the computer. And now we can go over to our little test bench and flash the BIOS. So now we've got our file on our USB stick. So what we're gonna do is put it into the motherboard. So taking a look at the back of the motherboard, we'll do that first of all. You've got a couple of options there and things. So there is the USB. That is the one which has got the little marking around the outside and it says BIOS flashback. So no problems there. The BIOS flash button is down at the bottom there next to the USB port. Just make sure that your button actually clicks so you can hear that. It should have a defined click to it. If it doesn't have a defined click to it, it means the button is faulty or there's something blocking it from being pressed in. So if for some reason your system isn't working, check that the button is actually working as a kind of uh, switch as it should do. So nice and clicky. So we're gonna put our USB stick into the BIOS flashback port, which is the lower of the two USBs on there, USB 2.0. We'll put our board back onto our little test bench we've got here. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug in our two cables, one of which is the EPS. So that's gonna go into this top corner and the 24 pin power, which is on the far side. So once everything's connected up, turn on the power supply. We'll flick that into the on position. So now what I generally do is press and hold the BIOS flashback button for about three seconds just to make sure that it's working, or at least until you see the LED flashing, which should be visible just through the side there. So let's find the button. One, two, three. And we'll release that. And there we go. Our power supply is clicked on. We've now got the CPU LED at the top here and the BIOS flashback LED is somewhat hidden. So let's see if I can turn that around. Yeah, there you go. You can see it a little bit now through the display port there. So what we're looking for now is for the flashing to maintain this particular speed for about a minute or so. That means that it's actually initializing the BIOS flashback system. Then we'll find that the flashing speed will change. It will generally speed up a little bit. Then we're looking for it to slow down a little bit and then for the system to shut itself down and you'll see all the lights go off. You may even hear your power supply switch off. So I think it's actually still flashing the same. So best thing to do, just leave it well alone. Don't touch anything and just, uh, just keep a, a little eye on it. Maybe go and have a cup of tea, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So there we go, you've just seen the motherboard shut down. The USB light is now stopped flashing and the system's rebooted, power supply clicked on and off. And we've now got our CPU LED at the top here because we don't have a processor or anything connected. So at this point now, if you're concerned what to do because you've still got power going through the system, it's really straightforward. All you need to do is just go to your power supply and turn off the power and give it a little while, you should find the capacitors will discharge and all the lights will go off, at which point now you can unplug a USB stick and carry on with the rest of your build. Alternatively, if you want to, if you, while you're in this situation, you can stick in your CPU, stick in your GPU if you need to, a bit of RAM, just to make sure that you can actually get a BIOS screen. The choice is entirely up to you. So there you go, there is the BIOS flash. Uh, some other things you can do actually, which I didn't say originally, I should have probably said it before I started the flash, but there you go, it's what it is. Um, it's quite handy if you've got a watch with you, just set a timer. Generally when you're doing this, the entire thing from the moment you press the button to start flashing to the end of the process, should be somewhere around the sort of five to six minutes mark. So ideally if you can, just start a timer up. If it's gone way past those times, then it's not working. So you can give up, turn it off and start over. 
Also, if you are experiencing any problems, we do have a Discord, which is free of charge, uh, no fees required. What we do ask is possibly that if you're a subscriber to the channel, that'd be very helpful. But otherwise, yeah, it's completely free of charge. You can come in, ask any questions. So if you are struggling with your BOSS updates, uh, more than welcome to kind of share your problems with us and hopefully we can solve them for you. So anyway, that has been how to do a USB BOSS flashback on the MSI Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, the DDR5 version. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then maybe consider hitting the subscribe button and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.